Names change, but the results stay the same. The Packers' ownership of the Bears. So a couple of things from this game. Number one, and I talked about this on Friday, and really a lot of last week as well, I think the Packers have been incredibly undervalued by the public, the media, the fans coming into this season for the simple fact that people focus on the quarterback so much that they tend to forget how good a lot of teams are in other areas. The Packers, for example, may have had an underwhelming season last year, missing the playoffs, obviously, but they came into the season as Super Bowl favorites and a team that had been the one seed in the NFC back-to-back years. Last year was supposed to be more of the same, and they cratered. And they got poor quarterbacking some of the time from Aaron Rodgers. They certainly got poor quarterbacking from him in Week 18 of the win and end game against Detroit. They had young wide receivers that they were trying to bring along. Rodgers was frustrated. Probably LaFleur was frustrated. Everything was kind of at a fevered pitch about succeeding because the clock was ticking on Rodgers. The animosity was getting ratcheted up. And they collapsed under the weight of that. But they always had good talent. They've got pass rushers. They've got corners. They had an offensive line that was not healthy last year coming into the season. They had young wide receivers, but talented wide receivers. And they had two good running backs. The Packers have most of that roster back. It's mostly the same team as the one that's been a one seed previously or last year was a Super Bowl favorite except the quarterback. Now, granted, Jordan Love's a massive unknown. I don't expect people to just assume Jordan Love is going to be great. But that clip you just heard from LaFleur is very indicative. It's very, it illustrates something that is very important here. Jordan Love may be inexperienced, But if you believe the talking points of LaFleur or others, guys really like him. Guys feel a certain loyalty to him, that he's working hard, he's trying hard, he's putting it together, he wants to win people over, and they believe in that. They believe in that that DNA of his. And that's really important. It's not the most important. The most important is obviously the the quarterback's talent. But it is an important piece of success. The guys around you need to want to play with you or for you. There is not a greatest quarterback conversation about Brady or Montana or Unitas that can't, that can not include, that can exclude the fact that their teammates loved them. And not just because they won with them, because those guys made the other guys feel important. Those guys made the other guys believe they could do great things. Those guys connected with the their teammates. I'm not putting Jordan Love in that conversation. I'm just saying it's a, it's a component of a successful quarterback that the guys around you want to play for you and believe in you. And I think that was a big challenge with Trey Lance. That he never engendered any support. That maybe he was too lost. Maybe he wasn't whatever. There wasn't a component of his his personality that they connected with. Maybe he was aloof. Maybe he was immature. Whatever it was, I, I don't know. But that was something that was very, very, very silent. And, and alarmingly so. Nobody ever talked about how much everybody loved Trey Lance. Shanahan or Lynch never said, yeah, I mean, P- the guys really, they love Jordan Love for whatever reason. And a part of this is probably laying it on a little bit thicker because you've lost Rodgers, you want to build him up. But it does seem very authentic that the guys, and you think about how he's handled himself, he's never complained about not playing instead of Aaron Rodgers. There was no bitterness There was no, I've got to get out of here. There was a patience, and they respected that, I suppose. And so when Love played well yesterday, and he did play well, it was 
at least in part because the guys around him were playing hard for him as well and happy for him. He goes 15 to 27 for 245, three touchdowns, no picks. And I loved this stat from Jordan Love. Took only one sack all day. Love is agile. Love is slippery. And maybe, much like Rodgers benefiting from sitting behind Favre for so long, maybe Jordan Love's best-case scenario actually happened, where he had to sit and learn and wait, and then when he got his chance, he was ready. And this is why I will always push back on this idea that you've got to start your rookie quarterbacks day one because they either got it or they don't. They'll sink or swim, and you'll find out quick. I just don't believe that. I don't believe Jordan Love throws for 245, three touchdowns, no picks, day one, game one of his rookie year. I don't believe that, and I think you're crazy if you think that that's the case. Sitting helped Jordan Love. Now, he's got a really good roster, but sitting helped Jordan Love. And if Jordan Love is a top 15 quarterback in the NFL, not top five, not top 10, if he's a top 15 quarterback, so a top half, the Packers could easily win 11 or 12 games this year. Could easily win. They're really good. They have been really good. And guess what? They've gotten really bad quarterbacking in the playoffs or in the win and end game. If Jordan, is it crazy to think that Jordan Love could have been better or could be better this year in week 18 winning in than Rodgers was last year? No, not at all. Is it crazy to think that Jordan Love could have been a little bit more effective than Aaron Rodgers was in that pathetic performance against the Niners two years ago in the divisional round when the Packers went one and done? No, it's not crazy. Now, the same weather effects would happen to Jordan Love and the same good defense that they played against the Niners would would be a problem for Jordan Love as well. I'm just saying that the bar is low in Packer land about quarterbacking in big spots. Rodgers was bad. No if if Sandra Butts. He was a great regular season guy for the most part. Bad of the postseason. Now, I'm not saying Jordan Love's going to be great in the playoffs because he beat the Bears in week one. I'm just saying that the, there might not be a significant drop-off, as people assume, for this year's Packers team. I had him in the playoffs on Friday when I made my playoff picks as a wild card. They looked really good yesterday. Also, for the record, I mean, the Bears. I mean, how many years are we going to do this? Waiting for the Bears to turn a corner. Is Matt Eberflus the guy? Those big, dopey, top gun sunglasses he's wearing on the sideline? Everything's fine. Everything's going to be good. We're going to. I don't know. I didn't see a lot of good out of the Bears. I saw Justin Fields hold on to the football too long. I saw him throw into double coverage. I saw him look like he was out of sorts. And they're supposed to be getting the most out of Justin Fields. And I didn't see it yesterday. I didn't see it. That was a that was mostly a blowout for most of that game. 